People have sent me so many articles to read and give feedback to. I don't even think I would be able to get through them all. i got a busy schedule. But I wanted to say some broader points that these articles made me think about. These are all health policy articles that try to link mask mandates in school to some particular outcome, specifically reduce SARS-CoV-2 transmission. And they look at different places. They look at basically people who filled out surveys. That's a paper from Pediatrics, MMWR, Arkansas, for a very narrow slice of time. And it reminded me of that very famous paper by Brian Nozick. Brian Nozick, of course, the great reproducibility researcher. And in this paper, he gave the same data set of players' skin tones and whether or not they got a red card in soccer to 20-plus different teams. And he asked each team to analyze this data to see, is there a link between skin color and getting a red card? And in fact, many found that darker-skinned players were more likely to get the penalty card. A couple studies found no association at all. But what was remarkable was the range of possible associations. It went from three times increase all the way to no increase at all. That's the same data set, just different analytical plans. And skin tone has been coded by the researchers in advance. One can imagine if you allow the researchers to each develop their own data set, you choose what games to look at, what players to look at, you code skin tone, you code the adverse outcomes you care about, red card or whatever penalty, whatever other penalty you want in soccer, you might imagine a much broader range of answers that is generated. And this is a question where there is a sociopolitical valence to the right answer. I think many of us have a deep intuition about the way in which the world is unfair. Pick a question where we don't have such a strong intuition, such as the risk of a certain food ingredient being linked to cancer. And when researchers have examined this question, what we find is a huge variation in whether or not a single food is both salutatory or in fact harmful. And it can have both a anti-cancer and a pro-cancer study. What does this mean for masking? I have no doubt that there's going to be a thousand studies that come out in the next few years. Those are going to be studies that look at Arkansas or Mississippi or Spain, etc., and they're going to find either no association or maybe a significant association. The significant association is probably going to be limited to less than a 50% reduction in SARS-CoV-2 because I think beyond that, people will think it's implausible. This does not reflect the truth. It just reflects what the selection filters and analytical plans will give you. The best studies are probably the studies that there is not the opportunity for researchers to pick and choose data sets and pick and choose time windows, studies that look at a whole country over the whole pandemic, something like that. That's probably a more reliable study. I like the Spain study that came out this week showing really elegantly that there is a relationship between age and SARS-CoV-2 acquisition. Younger is better, of course, but there was no regression discontinuity at that age in which kids started wearing masks. And I think that's rather credible. This Arkansas study, why this time period, why Arkansas, um, are they doing an adequate job of adjusting for the deep confounder in the United States, which is that places that deploy mask mandates are fundamentally different than those that don't in salient ways beyond the mask mandate. That's why they did it, because they were willing to do it. And they are politically very different. They have strong, different opinions on SARS-CoV-2. They may take it more seriously and do a whole bunch of other things that coincide with the mask mandate. This is going to be a very tricky space in literature. I suspect we will never have an answer. The only way to answer questions like this, where there are strong answers, there are strong feelings in both direction, there is scientific uncertainty, there is basically 10 to the power of 7, 10 to the power of 8, 10 to the power of 9 different analytical approaches you could take to the problem. The only way to answer such a question is a cluster randomized control trial. You're never going to make headway with retrospective observational studies. Those are just my thoughts. I will try to review some of them in the future, but I've got you know, seven hats I wear and I got to do the other things first. And so I'm not gonna be able to review all these studies going on in perpetuity, but these are some broader meta research thoughts about the space. Ironically, many of them are traced to, I think, Brian Nozick and the other great mind in the meta research space, he who shall not be named, John Yonides. So that's it. Until next time.